everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name's Tamlin and this is Sewn on the Tyne. Welcome back. This video is going to be a big catch up sort of video, a little bit about where I've been and why it's taken me so long to get back behind the camera and also sharing a few things with you that I have purchased and couple of things that I've made. I hope you will enjoy what you see today. I just wanted to mention that I am going to include chapters on this video so if you go into the description box down below you will see all of the different timings for the different sections of this video and if there's anything that you aren't particularly interested in then do feel free to whiz past it but I'd love you to stay around for the whole thing. So where have I been? It's been ages or it feels like ages and ages other than my Soho Day Jane unboxing that I did the other day, it seems like a long time since I've filmed. So, where to start? We had a few weeks, it felt like a long time. It was probably only three or four weeks, but Taylor's sleeping was not good. Really, really not good. He, We've been really lucky actually, he's slept pretty well. Since about the age of 14 months, he has slept through the night pretty consistently giving us you know a good 12 hour 13 hour sleep every night which has been amazing and then you know these things happen don't they whether they're sleep regressions or you know whether he was feeling a bit poorly or whatever he went through a few weeks of waking up between around 4 and 4 30 a.m and getting up for the day so yeah that was really really tough and really took it out of us to be honest because we were still having to then get up and function and go to work and you know be normal humans on very 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 little sleep so that was a few weeks thankfully he came out of that and we're pretty much back to normal now which is amazing but possibly as a result of that my defenses were down and I became really really poorly and I was wiped out with the flu proper flu I don't think I've really had proper flu very often in my life but it really wiped me out for a good three weeks I would say for the first week at least I was bed bound pretty much so yeah that was that and then life's just been hectic really I've had some things going on with my northern soul sisters I've got my so tuned socials going on all the time and life is great but busy so as you can imagine trying to sort of film and edit and all of those things in amongst all of that is quite tricky but i really am keen to try and bring you some slightly more regular content i can never commit to days or times or a schedule at all but i will endeavor to be here a little bit more regularly i promise so I'm going to start off with what I'm actually wearing today and if you watched my So Hilly Jane unboxing you will have seen a little sneak peek of this. This is the Friday Pattern Company Saltwater Slip which is a dress pattern <laughs> and this is actually a top. So I'll stand up and show you and then I'll explain the story behind what happened with this pattern. <laughs> So I have made the saltwater pattern quite a few times now. I absolutely love it. It is one of my favourites. I've made I made five and this was due to be my sixth one. I got this fabric from So Haley Jane. It was part of the luxury box a few months ago, which I don't get, but I did ask Haley if there was any leftover and I managed to nab a two metre piece, which is perfect for the saltwater for me. I started cutting this out at a Sew Tune social a couple of months ago. But didn't get time to finish cutting it out and then it stayed in a project bag for weeks then last week was it last week or a couple of weeks ago i had my sunday so tune social and i was trying to decide what i was going to sew up and this just sprung to mind i thought yes i'll make my salt water it'll be great so the day is obviously quite hectic i'm the hostess so i do need to be kind of setting everything up and chatting to people and making sure everything's all right and we also went up to first for fabrics for a little bit of shopping so my head was kind of 
buzzing and all over the place. Then when I finally sat down to sew, I opened up my project bag and realised that not everything had been cut out, so I needed to cut out a few bits. One of those bits was the strap binding, which is here, so it goes all the way around and creates your adjustable straps, and they are really long pieces, so I needed to cut these out. I went and found a little edge of a table. There was only a small section of a table where I could cut this out because the Sunday is really busy. So I grabbed a piece of fabric, lay it out, lay my pattern pieces out to my binding, cut those out, all great. Went and sat down to start sewing. Couldn't find the front of my dress anywhere. <laughs> now you're probably gonna be thinking, I know what she's done. <laughs> so I searched and I searched and I couldn't find the front long piece of my dress. And yet yeah, I had cut out my bias binding pieces from my dress rather than a scrap piece of fabric. <gasps> my heart just sank. I couldn't believe it. I'm in a room with 20 people <laughs> all sewing, getting on with their things and I picked up this front of my dress. I'd stay stitched the neckline, I'd sewn in the bust darts. I just was very unlucky that when I picked up what I thought was a scrap piece of fabric, which was the front of my dress, lay it out on the table, I lay it out upside down and the top part of the dress was hanging off. So I didn't notice that it was in fact my dress. It just looked like a scrap piece of fabric. And what's funny is when I lay it out, I thought, oh, I've got a bigger scrap than I thought I did. Yeah, because it was my dress. So by this point, it was about half past one and I had another two and a half hours of my social left. So my instant reaction was, I'll see if I can get some more of the fabric. It was a Lady McElroy Visco Chalet Cobra Corsage and I would have been able to get it quite easily, I think. But then I realised I would have two and a half hours to do nothing <laughs> for the rest of the afternoon. So a little light bulb just went off and I thought, why not just make it into a top? I love a little crop top, a little vest top. Why not just do that? So that's what I decided to do. I took my dress piece and the, the top part was intact, but then it just then went down on a severe diagonal <laughs> where I'd cut out my binding. So I simply cut across at the lowest point that I could, cut across the front, did the same on the back and then I carried on making up the pattern as per the instructions. And I've ended up with what is actually a really happy accident because I love it. And I actually think that I'll make more of these, like deliberately make them into tops because I really love this. And I don't think it'll take up much fabric. So I need to actually make one of these intentionally and just see how little fabric I can get away with. But I think that it won't take up much fabric at all, other than your strap binding pieces, which need to be cut on the bias. But I'm going to shorten mine a little bit because I, you create these adjustable straps and mine are folded back quite a lot. So I could get away with actually shortening that strap piece quite a bit, I think. So yes, I am going to make more of these. It was a very happy accident. It was so funny though, because everybody else was like devastated for me. And inside I was really upset. If I'd have been at home on my own, I probably would have cried, <laughs> maybe poured a glass of wine, <laughs> maybe thrown the project in the bin, but I was in company. So I decided to just make it work in the words of Tim Gunn, make it work. And I did, and I'm really, really happy with the result. Hopefully that's made you realize that everybody makes sewing mistakes, sometimes big, <laughs> sometimes small, and it's absolutely fine. It really is. It's only fabric at the end of the day. Right, so I thought I'd share a few little purchases with you. A couple of patterns that I've bought recently. I mean, these things are from the past few months since we last spoke. So a couple of patterns and I've got paper patterns. Mainly I use PDFs now, to be honest, and I probably have picked up some other PDFs in this time, 
but I just can't remember right now. <laughs> so I thought I'd share the paper patterns with you because I have them here physically to show you. The first one is a classic Tilly and the Buttons pattern, the Agnes, which has been re-released. So it's been released in their wider size range, so a six up to a 34. And it's got lovely Sam from Purple Sewing Cloud as one of the models on the front there. And it's just a really simple jersey top pattern. I've made it before, I had this pattern originally, but I really wanted this new and updated version on my shelf, really, on my pegboard so I can show it off. So I do have plans to sew up the Agnes, probably the long sleeve version and the short sleeve version, but without any of the ruching or the puffy sleeves or anything, just the very simple jersey top. I have a couple of black jersey tops in my wardrobe which I think I got from somewhere like Sainsbury's a few years ago and I wear them under things so layered under things but they've got holes in they're terrible <laughs> but they're so comfortable and they're so useful and I need to recreate them so my plan is to get some black bamboo jersey and make a couple of simple Agnes tops as well as in some more jazzy prints too. The other paper pattern that I got, it's a bit random for me because I don't usually sew with the big four patterns, the commercial pattern companies, but I was tagged in a post by Mimi G, as in it was Mimi G's post, she didn't tag me, <laughs> but Linda from Granny Linda and then I think it was either Ruan or Rachel tagged me in Mimi G's post where she had made this incredible dress and the pattern is McCall's M8 361. Now on here it doesn't look all that but the Mimi G version is incredible. So it's like a little shirt dress. I think this is the version I would make. Version C I think this is the one that Mimi G made. So it's just a little shirt dress on the top with quite a flowy skirt but then it's got this incredible cut out waist detail which is just right up my street. I love anything that accentuates the waist. I like to pull my garments in at that point or make sure they're fitted well at that point. So to have some cut out detail in there is just perfect for me. So I had to snap up that pattern. Now I don't actually think this has been released yet in the UK, but I signed up to the So Direct VIP club where you get early access to the patterns and I was able to get this ahead of time and actually I got it free because when you become a VIP you get a voucher for a free pattern and free postage so this was absolutely free. I'll pop a link down below to the VIP club for So Direct and you can go and have a little look and see if you want to sign up. So I'll share a few little fabrics with you I think. The first one is a gift from somebody and it was just the kindest thing. So after my mini disaster at Sotoon where I messed up my salt water, not messed up, well I did mess it up, it just turned out all right. But the next Wednesday Sotoon, one of my lovely ladies, Hayley, turned up with a gift for me and she just said that she was so heartbroken by what had happened that she really wanted to make it better so she picked out some Lady McElroy fabric from her stash and gave it to me as a gift to sort of make up for it so it's just the kindest thing I'm so so appreciative and grateful to have such wonderful people in my life but this is the fabric so it's a viscose jersey I think it's like a crepe jersey and it's just got this incredible design on it with all of those leaves. I love it. I think she said there was between two and three meters here. So there's loads. I absolutely love it. So I'm thinking of making probably the kilo wrap dress, which is probably boring because I've made it so many times before, but I just think that'll be perfect. And I'd like to make it in time for my holiday to Santorini at the end of May. I think that would be wonderful. The next fabric is one that actually just came through the post today. This was in last month's So Hayley Jane box. This month's. This month's? The latest one anyway. <laughs> and it was the luxury fabric, which I don't get. But when I saw it, I just had 
to grab some. So again, I messaged Haley and said, can I please buy some of the luxury fabric because it's just right up my street. It's my colours. I love the pinks and the blues and it's got that sort of tie dye look to it. It's a viscose crepe. So it's got that lovely crinkly texture and loads of lovely drape. I have no plans for this. I don't know what to make out of it, but I just had to have it. So if you've got any suggestions, do let me know down below. I'd love to hear some ideas. See if you can inspire me. The next one I'm going to share with you, you will have seen if you watched the Northern Soul Sisters live from Birmingham a couple of weeks ago. I've only got off cuts here because I've already cut out my project, but it's this beautiful neon blur floral viscose. This is from Guthrie and Garney. And I bought three metres of this, if I remember rightly, to make a VN dress by Size Me Sewing. And that's to wear to a wedding, which is actually in about three weeks time. So I need to get cracking. I have cut it out, so I've made a good start. The colours are just beautiful, aren't they? Rachel got some of this as well. I don't know what she's planning to make, but I just love it and couldn't resist it for myself. The next one is a fabric that I admired for a long time and really fell in love with when we went to the Knitting and Stitching show in November and Man Yi, who had been on the sewing bee, was wearing a saltwater slip dress made in this fabric. It's a Fabric Godmother viscose crepe. I love the colours in that. so vibrant. I've got two meters of this so I actually I resisted it for a long time but then I spotted it on Sew Me Sunshine and they had it in the sale. I think reduced to 14 pounds a meter or it might even have been 12 and then they had a discount code for 20% off I think it was for a weekend so I managed to get this for a real real bargain. They actually only had one metre of this listed on their website, but I sent them a message and just said, by any chance, do you have a bit more? Because I know working in a fabric shop, it's really difficult to keep the quantities that you have on your website completely accurate. So I thought, I'll just message them, see if they've got a little bit more than they think. And actually they measured up for me and they had two metres, which was perfect. So I think I might just copy Manier completely and make a saltwater slip out of this. Unless you have any other ideas and I'd love to hear them from you. Give me some suggestions for what I should do with this beautiful fabric. Two more fabrics to show you. So recently, well, I say recently, it was probably about three or four weeks ago, we had a big delivery of viscose jersey into First for Fabrics. And I love viscose jersey. I find it really comfortable to wear. I love sewing with it. And I love the garments that you can create that they always end up being super comfortable and they look great I think so we had a big delivery and this one was my favorite I think just because I love the colors in it so it's got all of these gorgeous sort of leaves in different colors so we've got shades of blue that magenta sort of purple color white and then it's on a black background and I just really really loved that and had to snap it up straight away so again, a little bit boring, but I think that's probably going to become a kilo wrap dress as well. If you have any viscose jersey dress patterns to suggest to me to tear me away from the kilo wrap dress, then please do let me know. But I love a kilo. I really do. And I think that's going to be a beautiful one. Again, I'll probably wear that in Santorini also here too. And then the last one is another one from work from First of Fabrics. Again we had another delivery the other day of some Stuff of Denmark jerseys. So this is a cotton jersey and I just really really love this one. I think it's just the colours in it are gorgeous. I've got a metre of this and I'm going to make the Agnes by Tilly and the Buttons. How lovely is that? So it's got these green leaves and then all of these different pink flowers on and that'll be perfect for an Agnes. I just got a meter because I think I'll just make a short sleeve version and then I can wear it tucked into high-waisted jeans. So that was all of the new bits and bobs that I've been picking up recently. I hope you like them. Do let me know which one was your favorite down below. I'd love to hear that. What else? So 
a couple of things that I've been sewing. I, I am planning on filming a makes video soon to share more of what I've been sewing, but my most recent makes have been this. Then also the gift that I made my lovely mum for Mother's Day, which I've gifted now, so I can't show you, but we can put some photos in. And this is the Soften Tote Bag by Soften Studio. I made this a few weeks ago for a friend's birthday and I really, really loved the outcome. I think it's a beautiful gift. Now it is time consuming. It's a quilted tote bag. You do all the quilting yourself and it's lined, it's got bound edges on the pocket. It's quite an involved make, but it does make a really beautiful end result. So I decided to make one for my mum for Mother's Day. I used a Rifle Paper Company canvas that I had in my stash from a couple of years ago. And then I lined it with a vintage cotton from First of Fabrics. And I included a lovely little label that came in my Kylie in the Machine advent calendar last year. And I loved the result. It was not without its faults. I had to do some unpicking because a couple of things went wrong. I think it's the pressure of making for somebody else. So I put those right and it ended up with a really beautiful bag and my mum loved it. So I would recommend the pattern if you want to make something a little bit special for somebody, then I would recommend that pattern. It's a great one. The instructions are fab. It does just take a little bit of time. So be prepared for that. And then the last thing that I'll just share with you is a little sewing plan that I've got for the week ahead. I'm hoping, hoping <laughs> that I will get this done. So in the month of March, there's been two wonderful sewing challenges running. One of them has been So Frugal 23, run by Ruan and Sam from Frugalissima. And then the other one has been So Yellow for Endo, run by Jess from So What If I Sew. The reveal date for that has now been and gone. I'm hoping that I did manage to get something sewed up for that. I had a plan. Well, I'll share it with you actually, because it's right next to me. So as you watch this, it's the 24th of March and the reveal date is the 25th. And I'm hoping that I might get this fabric, which is an art gallery cotton jersey, turned into a Tilly and the Buttons Agnes t-shirt by tomorrow. We shall see. <laughs> we'll see if that happened. And then the other reveal date for So Frugal is next Sunday, which is the 31st of March. And I'm hoping that I manage to get something sewn up. I'm planning on making the Ruby skirt by Sew so Over It, which I've seen lots and lots of people talking about. And it's a free pattern. And I really, really like the look of it. So... I have my pattern printed out. I just need to cut it out and then cut out my fabric. And the fabric I'm going to be using is this, which is also an art gallery fabric. This is an art gallery cotton, which I've had in my stash for about three years now. And I think that will make a really, really lovely skirt. It's quite a light fabric. So I'll just have to be careful about my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> and the colour that I wear underneath but I just think that'll make a really beautiful skirt for the summer and then I could make a little top like a little crop top in any of these colours like the pink or the orange or the navy I think would look really really nice with it so fingers crossed I get that done before the end of the month too I think that might be everything I'm going to share with you today so hopefully you've enjoyed just having a little catch up with me and finding out where I've been what I've been up to and a few things that I've been purchasing. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching today. I hope you're all really, really well. If you've enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you aren't already subscribed to my channel. It'd be lovely to have you here regularly. I will see you all again in my next video. Happy sewing. Bye. I hope you like them. Do let me know which, which, bleh. Just a little mention for the fact that well that doesn't sound right does it oh. <laughs> i love oh <laughs> i looked like i was giving you the finger i didn't mean to <laughs> hmm.